It's that time again. The annual conference of the American Society of Ag Consultants, otherwise known as ASAC, is going to be held in Fort Myers, Florida, this November 4th and 5th. Kirk Covington is one of nine professionals who will address the conference. The other speakers who will cover a wide range of topics represent Florida Farm Bureau, Florida Citrus Commission, University of Tennessee Institute of Agriculture, National Ag Law Center, Risk Mitigators and Advisors, Tyler Associates, as well as the lead economist for dairy at Cobank, and myself, Chrissy Wozniak, from North American Ag. The day and a half of presentations will be followed by ag tours on Tuesday afternoon at Echo Farms, one of my favorite places here in Fort Myers. Attendees will experience farming at its most creative, with unique demonstrations, plants, and techniques being used to help farmers and urban gardeners in developing countries. A second tour at ECHO will showcase simple technologies that can improve food, water, and shelter for millions of people. A third tour of a hydroponic grower is also being planned. For more information and to register, visit www.agconsultants.org. That's www.agconsultants.org. See you there. Today's Egg Spotlight episode is sponsored by Coolers. Make every day a cool day for your cows. The Coolers system allows you to control the cow's environment 24-7. For more information, go to northamericanag.com and find them in the Industry Connect section. Hi, and welcome to the North American Ag Spotlight. I'm Chrissy Wozniak, and my guest today is Chapter President of the National Agri Marketing Association, He's also owner, VP, GM, and corporate sales manager at Lee Newspapers, and he resides in Sharon Springs, New York. I would uh, like to welcome Bruce Button. Welcome, Bruce, and thank you so much for joining me. Good morning, Chrissy. So can you tell me a bit about your about yourself and your background to start with? All right. Well, Sharon Springs is a really little town, so either worked on your farm or worked in the village at one of the resort hotels at the time. But uh, no, I spent my time on the farm as a small dairy farm. And probably when I was about 12, uh, the herd was sold off and uh, I continued to raise beef animals and put in some hay and like that. And uh, then I went off to college and decided being a full-time farmer wasn't going to be for me. So went to work for my current company 43 years ago and wow. haven't looked back. So I'm very fortunate that uh, we are involved in agriculture uh, with our trade publications and trade shows. So I still get to play with the machinery once in a while and get to talk to all the great agricultural people in the industry, whether they're on the, on the producer side or on the manufacturer side. Yeah, that's great. And, and Lee Publishing is how many different publications are there? Hmm, let's see, four, seven, we got, uh, we have nine print publications wow. and we've got a completely digital one that goes to the construction industry and we got a new one we're launching this fall that's going to be a more rural living type that's going to be totally digital. Oh, wow. Oh, that's great. And uh, I am really excited about my first farm show back after the pandemic empire farm days uh which lee publishing acquired was last year right correct back in yeah. uh, january of two, 2020 <laughs> and how did that go <laughs> well you know the first three months of 2020 were awesome you know we were selling a lot of space and everybody's excited and then uh yeah march hit and Things didn't go so well since then, but uh, I don't know. We kind of, kind of look, looking back, it was kind of a blessing. It gave us a time to kind of regroup because uh, at that point in time, we really pretty much had to do everything kind of as it was already set up. And um, as longtime exhibitors at Empire Farm Days, you know, we noticed how it'd been going, and um, you know, said, "Well, if we owned it, we would do this, this, and that's well, well, now we do." So. Um, made a lot of changes, had some time, and uh, I had reached out to Dan Palladino from Palladino Farms in Pompey, New York, and I said, hey, what are you, are you interested in uh, considering hosting Empire Farm Days? And uh, he got back to me rather quickly. I, was, I remember it was on a Saturday night, and I don't know what month that was, maybe last June or probably May, 
whenever we finally found out we weren't going to be able to do the show up at uh, in Seneca County. So yeah. uh, he got back to Mary Way. I was all excited because they had, they had hosted it uh, at least five times previously. And uh, he's, he loves the nostalgia of it. He remembers mowing the lawns during that wow. time because he was like 12. <laughs> and yeah. uh, so he, had, he remembers his father and grandfather being involved in it. So it, and uh, I can kind of found his business. He's got a really nice farm operation, but he also has a brewery and restaurant operation on site, which is oh, really is that gorgeous. Right? Wow. And, uh, so he's very well known in the area, and uh, so we're very excited to team up with with them for the next uh, at least eight years. Really? Oh, that yeah. is great. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, so it'll be sad we don't get to eat in Auburn and <laughs> <laughs> and do the normal things for Empire, but in Seneca Falls. Yeah. But, well, but. we're right outside of Syracuse, so there's a lot of access to a lot more, you know, hotel rooms. Yes. I know a lot of the sales reps travel and use their favorite chains while they're, everybody's there. Yeah. And uh, so there's, there's definitely a lot of options for eating. And uh, and we're very centrally located now because we're not very far from the intersection of 81 and 90. So uh, mm-hmm. very easy to get to. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I think I got a good feeling about, about this for sure. Yeah. 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 And so what are some highlights of the show? Well, some of the things that we've, we've changed uh, obviously the location has changed um people first they'll notice is just a physical change there's kind of we have two main roads so there's a lot of uh, prime locations for our exhibitors um we're kind of adding things in as we can because again this is a lot, a lot of new things but we're going to be doing a skid steer rodeo uh, wow. that attendees can participate in plus we're going to be having a celebrity one where uh, Dan Palladino is going to be competing against local uh, TV, radio personalities. Oh, wow. Like that. Um, we are going to have several of the exhibitors are going to have a demonstration areas where they can get on the equipment, and try it out. Um, so that, you know, that's something that's not really new, but it's going to be, you know, very convenient to do. Uh, FFA is going to be doing their welding and driving competitions also. You know, mm-hmm. some of those things are carried over, uh, but we got, uh, you know, we got quite a few new exhibitors in there, uh, some exciting new technology uh, that's going to be uh, featured. So uh, it it won't be the same old, same old, let me put yeah. it that way. Uh, so, you know, we're excited about the new exhibitors we got coming in and, uh, you know, just the entire look of the show. It's just a, I mean, to me, it's a gorgeous location it just uh you can see syracuse from there you can see the carrier dome from up there oh, really it's, a, it's yeah should be a nice breeze up there pretty much all the time so that'll, nice. that'll help yeah that yeah i remember some hot days at <laughs> seneca falls <laughs> yeah the one That's thing good. we got there too is uh you know if it gets really hot and whatever i mean uh it's just a short walk off site up to uh the Heritage Hill Brew House, which is a nice big air conditioned venue where you can have a nice cold beverage and a that will be popular really nice meal if you want and uh, mm-hmm. you know so yeah you know, we are going to have some really really good food right on site but mm-hmm. you know I can see some people making a short trek up there to cool off and relax or take your customer up there and yeah. treat them to a nice adult beverage or mm-hmm. not adult beverage. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. So how many exhibitors are you anticipating? Uh, we hope to hit 400. We're, we're nice. almost there now. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a, you know, yeah, the, the, supposedly the pandemic is over, but uh, it has really affected the supply chain. And then uh, some of the, you know, incentives have been out there, I guess I'll just call them disincentives to work. Um, we have a lot of exhibitors that are kind of just waiting and you know they they need it they need help mm-hmm. you know and uh you know they can't be in two places at once yeah. and there's you know definitely some inventory issues here and there that are holding people back so you know i've told them you know we can we'll take you in you know you let us know the week before the show we'll get you in there so that's good to know uh, 
I think there's going to be a lot of that. You know, mm-hmm. just they got to see what's still on their lot that they can bring to show. So, yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. And and any idea what you're expecting in terms of atten- attendance at all? Well, we've been doing trade shows for 30 plus years, and uh, I guess one of the things we do is not overinflate figures. Yeah. Um, we tell people we tell exhibitors how many people came through the show, say our Keystone Farm show, and they're like, you know, that's not possible. There had to be 50,000 people here. And we're like, no, there was 12,000 people here. Right. <laughs> you know, just, just everybody, you, you know, visualize it. Mm-hmm. Um, in the past, I think they've claimed 60,000 people came to Empire Farm Days. Um, we're looking for 20. Yeah. We're looking for 20. Yeah, that, you get twenty thousand people sure. through there in the three days. Uh, we'll be more than happy. Mm-hmm. Uh, but again, we want the right people there. Uh, yeah. We've done some different things with marketing that hasn't been done before, and and we do have the advantage of our own farm publications and social mm-hmm. media and like that that uh, can really help target target this audience. Yeah, definitely. That's good. And uh, yeah, so Keystone was probably, was it the first trade show in the East to actually go ahead as normal? Yes, we actually put on a very successful show in January of this year down in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Uh, I missed it this said, year. but <laughs> A lot of people said, you know, how, how'd you do that? And I said, I don't know. Nobody told us we couldn't. So we just did it. Um, and we still had, we probably, normally we have about 500 exhibitors there and 10 buildings we had. Right, 350 exhibitors wow. and four buildings. Wow. And, so you're probably uh, just missing all the Canadians then, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know, the attendance was was off, but uh the exhibitors all said, you know, the people they wanted to see were there. It was a very quality crowd of uh of farmers. So, you know, we figure we probably had about eight thousand attendees you know, mm-hmm. over three days, but it was a very successful show. And uh, yeah, it was kind of a breath of fresh air to have that come off. And uh, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, that I, yeah. I heard about wish so bad I could have been there. Hopefully, hopefully next winter, I'll be able to go to that one too. Yep. Yeah. And um, there's actually something really interesting that I've thought a lot about over the last year. I remember back in 2019 doing the, the circuit like we've always done. And um, a lot of people were saying that that uh, the trade shows are dying. I just heard it over and over and over again in 2019. Oh, trade shows are dying. Now, people can't wait to get back. And yeah. it's really amazing to me, you know, that what everybody's saying that I know manufacturers are really excited about diving into the digital age, yeah. but there's something missing. Yeah, you, you need the personal meeting, and the person can ask questions, and right there, and the, the product guys are there that can answer the questions. And yeah, we're we're in, involved in several different, you know, markets. Uh, we have commercial horticultural publications, and, and again, all those big trade shows were canceled, and there's a lot of pent up demand. I guess I would say, you know. Uh, I've seen some major uh, decorating companies that are in the industry putting out, I mean, they've, I've been on the receiving end of emails. Hey, take the survey. How do you feel about Mm in-person meetings? You know, do you feel comfortable and all that? And they've done, I mean, over the last year, probably gotten six of those. Yeah. Um, Yeah. uh, Especially the ag community, they really aren't, they weren't that upset about this whole thing. They, They wanted to, uh, be out and talk to the manufacturers and the dealers and uh so there's and each other of, right it's yeah. you know you a know, lot of farmers are, live a, a lonely life it's a, with it's their a own small, family it's a small community they yeah. all know each other and uh they want to get together yeah. yeah yeah for sure and then i i know touched on this a little bit before but looking back over the last year what are your main takeaways from the pandemic what can we what have we learned well, I think we learned as a lot of other companies that uh, you had to be able to work remotely <laughs> mm-hmm. and rely on our technology a lot more. And again, uh, to a certain extent, that was fairly successful. Uh, it was a cost-saving thing, but mm-hmm. I think at a cost of 
that relationship, you know, where you could see people face to face. But uh, as we go back into it, we're not jumping into it and say, okay, well, you got to go see those guys every single week. Uh, maybe you can see them once a month and use technology in between. You know, we're having, we have sales reps all over the country. So now we have Zoom meetings and uh, that's actually kind of nice actually see their faces and whatever, because before it was on the phone or, you know, email and like that. So. Um, yeah, some of the thing, I guess some of the things that, uh, I don't know if they're, they're good takeaways, but again, this whole supply chain disruption yeah, really didn't see that coming, you know, <laughs> it's like, yeah, especially the way it's played out in ag, it's just been so interesting to watch how yeah. it's affected. Not really the way we would have predicted. Right. Yeah. And it's all different industries. I mean, I just talked to our one gal at handles or um cell phones where she said she one of our employees their phone crapped out or whatever and she's she went online to well you know he's one of these guys that doesn't like to change so she's like well i'm gonna get the latest and best one so he can hang on to her for five years and won't be a problem mm-hmm. and get it but you could get it in order and get it in september well you know he needs one now so she's had to actually have to order an older model to get it yeah um talking to some uh, outdoor power equipment manufacturers and they said yeah they usually have 80,000 units out at dealerships and right now they got 30,000 units and they're kind of getting sold as they end up on the on the yard you know so there they go yeah you know uh, yeah, pickup it, trucks are a big you know if you're going to be ordering one now because uh, if you go look at uh, a truck lot there's probably not very many there mm-hmm. it's amazing yeah. it's definitely not what I would have thought would have happened a year after I thought no nope. sales would be down instead it's it's a huge yep. demand it's just crazy you know, we're seeing commodity prices go crazy lumber whatever yeah. else uh, I was planning on putting a above ground pool in this year and a deck and I still am but <laughs> the budget's a little bit different yeah. and I was amazed that a different style of tool pools weren't available like well no we can't we don't have that when we can't get it so you know what mm-hmm. size round pool do you want yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right i want a pool it's gonna be a round one yeah um, wow that's yeah. yeah something you wouldn't think about either i tried to buy siding and i had to pick like my fourth third or fourth color choice because the resin wasn't available to make the siding that's who would have thought that that would be a ramification yeah. of this yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, I'll be glad to get this all behind us. So, Me too. <laughs> so what do you think is our biggest opportunity that agriculture faces after all of this? The, the biggest opportunities? Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, I think still anytime there's a disruption, I think uh, technology comes to the forefront. You know, especially mm-hmm. with farmers, they get to sit back and say, hey, what can we do more efficiently, cheaper, any more cost effective? You know, so people that are in that end of things, I mean, whether it's, uh, you know, the manufacturing end, the equipment end, um, you know, these guys are very dependent on their equipment. It's got to stay up and running. Mm-hmm. And technology has played a huge part in that. And I can continue to see that come along. And, you know, now with this, you know, labor shortage, that's another one that forces it, you know, even yeah. with us, with our publishing business over the years, you know, as it gets harder and harder to hire people, you get machinery that'll replace them, you know? Yeah. So, um, you know, it's just the way it is. I mean, uh, employees are expensive and they don't mm-hmm. always show up to work sometimes you can't find them you know that type of thing and uh you know so i see that as a continued trend anything that's gonna help people do things uh uh do the same job with less less people i mean robotics have uh they're almost the norm now i mean if somebody's looking to make a change you see them talking to all the robotic milking equipment manufacturers Mm -hmm. and say hey you know what can you do for us and uh, I followed a few transitions. It's, you know, some of the farmers are a little cautious and then they're like, wow, that went smoother than I thought, you know. So, yeah. you know, it's going to become more, definitely more of the norm as we move forward. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. And so where can people find more information about Empire Farm Days? Well, obviously, the uh, any social media, if you put in Empire Farm Days, you're going to find us. Mm -hmm. uh, EmpireFarmDays.com is our website. Uh, you can find anything up there. We keep updating that. You can see the list of exhibitors and the map of the grounds and what's going on there. Uh, we're just kind of updating our frequently asked questions so you know what to expect there. Yes, there's golf carts for rent. Uh, Perfect. Yeah, yeah. No, you can't bring a dog. Uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah. Here's where it is. Here's where you can stay. That type of thing. All, the, yeah. all those type of questions are constantly updated up there. Great. That's good. And then I have one last question. So what are you most passionate about? What gets you out of bed in the morning? Oh, God. I just, uh, well, I guess, you know, if you looked at my Facebook page, mm -hmm. I love life. I just enjoy getting up in the morning, getting going. Uh, I love uh, my employees. I like to make sure they're successful. And then, uh, you know, on a personal basis, I just like helping out. You know, I said, my wife and I are foster parents. Uh, we also coach a Special Olympics volleyball team, wow. uh, which has been very disappointing. With you know, those those people have almost been in lockdown for the last year. They haven't been allowed to go do anything. And this was always something they really enjoyed getting out and doing. So we're looking for that to come back to normal so we yeah. can get back involved with that. Yeah. 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 That's it. Get, giving back is, is, has so yep. much reward, right? Yep. No, I've, you know, I've, I think I've accomplished everything I wanted to do in life. Now I just want to enjoy it and yeah. do whatever I can to, like I said, give back. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Bruce. All right, Chrissy. And yeah, and I Good look to forward to seeing you soon. <laughs> yeah, and thanks to everybody who's watching or listening. If you want more information, the links are provided in the show notes. And don't forget to subscribe to our North American Egg Spotlight YouTube channel and podcast, which is available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Amazon, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. So have a great day. All right, thank you. Thanks so much for listening to today's Egg Spotlight episode, where we put the spotlight on people and companies doing great things for the agricultural industry. Don't forget to subscribe on Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Stitcher, or on your favorite podcasting platform and give us a five-star review. You can also follow us on YouTube and Rumble to see the video version of Egg Spotlight. Also, head on over to NorthAmericanAg.com to subscribe to our Industry Connect update newsletter. If you're interested in advertising opportunities, email us at connect at NorthAmericanAg.com. Thanks for listening.